وربنا وما يرضى وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن شاء الله today is Saturday يوم السبت it is the 17th إن شاء الله ربيع and أول 1430 after the Hijrah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam corresponding with the 14th inshallah of March 2009 and we're here at Masjid al-Fajr in Chester, Pennsylvania and I believe the title is The Religion Needs Men that's it, right? Um, um, before beginning inshallah I, I, I want to uh, and please forgive me for what I'm about to say, uh, the analogy that I want to use. Some of us who look at movies or have looked at movies will notice that Hollywood sometimes, they'll bring the end of a movie, what happened at the end of the movie, to the beginning. It's a little style that they have. They started doing that maybe a few years ago. Uh, and then they'll bring you all the way back from the beginning up to the end. Uh, so we wanted to do, inshallah, um, for this next 45, 50 minutes, is to bring some examples at the end of this particular movie for us as Muslim men, and then bring it back to the beginning, inshallah. And before we do that, we wanted to say that in Islam, the Sharia is that which defines things. The Sharia is that which defines all terms. So anytime we want to know the meaning of something, we have to look at the Sharia. The Sharia is going to determine and define whatever exists in Islam. We can't allow anyone, uh, Muslim or non-Muslim, to define terms for us. So for instance, when we talk about moderation, moderation is defined in Islam by the Sharia, by the Quran, the noble Quran, and the authenticated Sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Whatever agrees with the Sharia, then it is moderate. Whatever opposes the Sharia, then on one end it's either extremism, on the other end, it's laxity. So whatever agrees with the Sharia, it is i'tidal. And the person who is practicing it is mu'tadil. I'tidal meaning it's moderate. It's in between the two. Whatever opposes the Sharia in any way whatsoever, on one side, from the right, or depend upon what side you're looking at it, on the left, then it's going to be tashaddud. It's going to be extremism. And the person who does it is mutashaddid. On the other side, it's going to be tasahul, which is laxity. And the person who practices that is going to be mutasahil. He's going to be laxed. That's the first thing. So if we look at that, and we look at this particular talk, the theme of this talk, the religion needs men, we'll be able to define, as probably Sheikh Talib already did, is gave us some examples, starting with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam, and some by some other ways to show us what really is a man. And we want to continue that, inshallah, not even knowing what he said, but I'm pretty sure, knowing him, that he gave some examples that are clear. So all of that is the first thing. Then to take you to the end of the movie and bring you back. In the past two years, we've had some incidences of men, Muslim men. We won't say that they're upon Salafiyyah, or they're upon Khalafiya, we won't say. We'll just say that, but they're Muslims. You know, we're not taking anything away from them, 
And we're not going to give them anything that is due to them that they don't own. But we can say that they are Muslims. In the past two years, just here on the East Coast, we won't say Philadelphia, Chester, or whatever, just on the East Coast alone, we've had some instances and examples of serious, serious crimes against humanity. Serious crimes. And these are only the brothers that got caught. You all know, I'm absolutely sure you all know about those men. We're not taking anything away from them. We already said we're not going to take, we're not going to ascribe Salafia to them. We're not going to exclude Salafia from them. But we know they were Muslims. Now let's say men. Remember the Sharia defines things. The Sharia is the thing that defines things. All the terms are defined by the Sharia. We have men who robbed banks. And as a, as a part of robbing that bank, a person, whether we like it or not, because the Sharia defines things, was innocent. One of those people were innocent. No matter how you look at it, according to the Sharia, one of those people that got killed was innocent. We have amongst those brothers, only Allah knows. Only Allah knows. And then those brothers. If anyone from amongst those brothers that put on the clothing of women, disgraced Islam, caused problems for our women, only Allah knows if one of them, not two or three, if one of them, it could have happened, but if one of them said, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to go through with this. From the G code, we would not have accepted him. In fact, we would have watched him. From the G code, and you understand what I mean by the G code. We would have watched him. Oh, no, he's backing out now. Something's wrong. Like, allegedly... One of the brothers wanted to back out from the Walmart thing. The point is, is that once again, I say for the third time, Allah knows best if it's two or three. If any one of them came to his senses and said, we're not going to do this. This is haram, what we're talking about doing, what we plan on doing is haram. And we're not going to do it, or at least I'm out. I'm not going to do it. Advising the men to fear Allah. We have another incident just in the past month where one of the men of Islam, one of the men, allegedly, maybe he's guilty, I don't know, maybe he's innocent, killed a police officer. Some say under the state of intoxicants, under the influence of intoxicants, Allah knows best. But I do know that the Sharia and the fuqaha of Islam, they say if a man gets high, uses any type of intoxicants, and he divorced his wife in a state of intoxication, the divorce is valid. And one of the reasons why it's valid is that he shouldn't have been intoxicated in the first place. So he got to catch that one. In colloquial terms, he got to catch that one. He got to eat that one. He has to wear it because he got zooted. So whatever he did when he was blazed, that's on him. We have an incident yesterday here on the East Coast. A brother that goes in and out volunteering his time to teach the Muslims who are incarcerated in a prison, a state prison, about Islam. And brothers who were going in and out with him, the prison, teaching the brothers about Islam, about the Sunnah, about the Sahaba, before that the Quran and the authentic Sunnah from the Prophet ﷺ on a regular basis for a while. Not days, weeks, months, maybe even years. The officials at the door of that prison on Jumu'ah, on Jumu'ah, either you submit to a strip search or we just have to, you know, do what we have to do. No, I'm not submitting. Okay, I'm not submitting. So what we'll do is 
we're going to charge you for refusing to do the strip search, and then we're going to tell you what you have. The brother submitted. This is yesterday, Jumu'ah. Remember what day is Jumu'ah. All right? And for those who know, if you've ever been incarcerated, Wallahu musta'an wa alayhi tuklan, you know that when the brothers come in to volunteer their time for Jumu'ah, in general, you don't go around to other areas in the prison. It's contained in that one room where you're going to have the khutbah and the salah, and as they call it, ta'aleem. You're going to have it in that one spot. You're not going to be going from place to place to place because it's a joint. Right? It's a prison. They check the brother, bag of marijuana. Not a bag, but I'm talking about a nice hefty bag. Bringing in marijuana. The brother who's with them starts crying. Allah Akbar, subhanAllah. They got tapes, tape recordings of his conversations, written correspondence. I mean, just absolute proof, just overwhelming proof that the brother was a mule. <coughs> Bringing this stuff in and in and out, in and out. Jumwa. Bringing narcotics to the brothers who are incarcerated. The brother asked them why, when they were bringing them back out with the handcuffs, why I needed some money. You know, times are rough. You know, we know the economic situation in America right now. Times are rough. I needed the money. Allah knows best. So now that brother has six kids that he's asking for the Muslims to put money together, to get them bailed out, who's going to take care of my kids, etc. His wife, they have a store. He has to get rid of, she has to get rid of all the stuff, doesn't have a job. One of the six kids is two months old. Another brother, just a month ago, for those who know the expression, they're in Delaware, maybe you use it in Philadelphia, I don't know. You know, everybody has their own terminologies when you get time. He got a dub. What's a dub, brothers? Got 20 years. Cops stopped him on the highway, $60,000 in his car. Cash. He got a dub, 20 years, minimum. Now he's writing. I want you to go, you know, maybe stop by and see my three boys now. You know, take them out, do some dawah, you know, make sure they learn Islam. 20 years. If Allah doesn't have mercy on that brother, when he gets out or he's eligible in the 20th year, his baby boy will be 32. So brothers, now we take you back up to the beginning of the movie. This is the movie for the Muslims. For the Muslims who say they believe in Allah who believe in the Prophet Muhammad, the greatest of Rijal, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of men, who displayed a rujula, manliness, to the highest that any man could display a rujula, manhood. We take it all the way back now. Who are the real Rijal? Who are the real men? How do you know that you're really a rajul? How do you know? I remember when I accepted Islam back in the mid-70s, early to mid-70s, I was reading this Yusuf Ali translation. And they had a thing in there saying either by him or someone else that he got it from that Christianity is the religion without men. And Islam, excuse me, Islam is the religion without men, and Christianity is the men without religion. Christianity is the religion that had no religion, men without religion. And Islam is the religion without men. Has a religion, but we don't have a lot of men. Christianity has a lot of men, but they don't have any religion meaning the essence of religion. One of the people of Islam, of the past, Al-Raghib, 
Al Asfahani, Rahimahullah, he says, Al Dhakr, Min Naw il Insan, Khilaf al Mara. That is the meaning of Al Rajul. Al Rajul, he says, Ma'roof. Al Rajul is known. He says, It is Al Dhakr, Min Naw il Insan, Khilaf al Mara. That the man, the Rajul, is a male from the species of mankind, which is the opposite of a woman. That's a Rajul. Because we know, even growing up here in the hood, there's a difference between, and the girls used to tell us all the time, because this is all men's function now. We can really, you know, talk the way we really want to talk. There's no girls in here. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> After the talk from these ulama, we'll see. Some of us may be girls. Some of us may be girls, brothers, I'm telling you. They always used to say, there's a difference between a man and a male. You heard it all the time. There's a difference between a man and a male. The male is just that species from amongst the human beings who's not a female. But the man is the one, back in those days, before we had Islam and the Sunnah, and light and a book to guide us, it was a man who took care of business. It hasn't changed, brothers. Still the same thing. But now, the definition is by the sharia on what is a man. He says, a man is a male from the species of mankind, the opposite of a woman. He says, a man is specific to the male amongst mankind. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ جَعَلْنَاهُ مَلَكًا لَجَعَلْنَاهُ رَجُلًا This is Surah Al-An'am, the sixth chapter of the Qur'an, the ninth verse. And if we would have made him an angel, we would have made him a man. The word man is used all through the Qur'an. In the singular, which is Ar-Rajul, and in the plural, Ar-Rijal. And there's a plural. In Arabic, some words have a plural of a plural. In some words in Arabic, the plural has a plural. So, the plural for the word rajul is rijal. And the plural for the plural is rijalat. Rijalat. You hold it long. Rijalat. The ulama, they also say, a woman is called Rajula. Rajula. Rajulatun. With a ta al marbuta at the end. The closed ta. Rajulatun. Rajula. A woman is called a Rajula if she imitates a man in some matters. Like the poet says, Lam yanaru hurmata Rajula. They will never attain the sanctity of the Rajula. The Rajula, we can say in English maybe, is a she-man. A she-man. It is said of the young boy, when he reaches puberty, that he is a man. And in the book of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاسْتَشْهِدُوا shahidaini مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ and get two witnesses out of your own men. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he forbade the woman from being masculine. You probably heard this from Shaykh Talib. He forbade Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the woman, from being masculine and becoming like a man. So the hadith says, لَعَنَ الْمُتَرَجِّلَاتِ مِنَ nisa." He cursed the women who imitate the men. And likewise, he cursed the men who imitate the women. May Allah forgive me and all of you. I remember back in the days when I was singing. I even came down to Philadelphia in 1972 to try out for the Delphonics. When Major Harris left. Went to Poochie and them house. You know, so I can be the second tenor or the first tenor for the Delphonics. May Allah forgive me. Not just for the music and the singing, but something that was added to it. We never even think about it. And some of us probably do it even now when we be singing in the car, in the, in the shower, or whatever. 
Because a lot knows him, then you know. That falsetto, that la-la, or sometimes called Poochie in the Delphonics, and Eddie Kendricks, and all that other stuff, the whispers, and the stylistics, and blue magic, that stuff is imitating women. That falsetto, first ten of falsetto, that's imitating women. We don't even think about it. To show you how shaitan rips us off. Man singing in a high voice. That's not his natural voice. We called it a falsetto. He's singing a false. Top tenor. That stuff, you get cursed. If you get cursed just for singing like that, how much more not taking care of the responsibilities like a real Raju and doing what Rijal are supposed to do? Think about it. You talk about that guy who sounds like a woman or has a little, you know, we used to say a broke wrist. He's a little effeminate. But here you are looking for a girl on Section 8. You're looking for a low-maintenance girl to take care of. Because you don't really want to be a rajul. You want to be a dhakar. And dhakar in the Arabic language means male. It just so happens, brothers, that the word dhakar is also used for penis. Think about that in Arabic. The same word that's used for male is the same word that's used for penis. And that's why back in the days again, we say, yeah, he got caught out there. He was thinking with his big head, the other head. He was thinking with the other head. Not with this head, but the other head. Thinking with the dhakar. Because he was a dhakar, not a rajal. Because a rajal stays away from zina. The real man stays away from getting high. The real man stays away from gambling. The real man stays away from robbing banks. The real man makes sure that his babies have an Islamic education. That's the real rudgel. Everybody else is faking. They are girl. How in the world, and you heard us say this before, no Salafi school for the kids. How do we call ourselves Rijal, brothers? But we can boast and brag. We can boast and brag. Now you go on YouTube, you see people making fun of us. SelfieTalk.net radio, people making cartoons of us. We don't have anything, nothing. Kids don't have no education. We send them to the kuffar and to the deviants. Not one Salafi school on the East Coast full time. And we call ourselves a Rijal. 15 pairs of sneakers, 20 pairs of sneakers, 10 pairs of Tims, all these coats. Always got a brush, you know, in your car, in your glove compartment, carrying it in your pocket. You're always combing and brushing your head. When the Prophet Sallallahu companion, Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anit tarajjul. Listen to the word, anit tarajjul. The verb, tarajjul. Rajula. Anit tarajjul illa ghibban. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade the men to brush and comb their hair all the time. She just do it once in a while. Like let two or three days go by. Why? Because that's like a girl. Getting a haircut every three days? Every five days, always brushing, making sure the waves is in. That's vanity. That's the attribute of a girl. Got to make sure your thing is always creased. And why can't it be wrinkled? Like a rudgel. Do you think the Prophet Wasallam and the companions were concerned about wrinkles in their thou? Their kufi got to be straight and everything. That's the way of the women. So based on all of this, brothers, it's possible, according to the people of Islam and knowledge, to define manhood as follows. Ar-rujula bi annaha ittisafu al-mar'i bima yattasifu bihi rajul adatan. A male, because of all of that we just mentioned, a male is characterized, he characterized himself with those things that a man is customarily characterized with. This is from the book called Al-Kuliyat. 
by El Kefawi, volume 1, page 293. A male characterizing himself with those things that a man is customarily characterized with is called a rujula manliness. Manhood in its most apparent of meanings is a person characterizing himself with that which men are customarily described with such as carrying heavy loads and taking on heavy burdens. From the clearest examples of this is the undertaking of the burden of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa the message of the messenger on the part of the noble messengers and the part of the noble messengers of whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the interpretation of the meaning of the ayah, and we did not send before you except men who we revealed the message to. So the ulama, they say, there is proof in this that women were not given the strength to carry the burdens of this message. That's why we don't find any women that were prophets. Even though there are some scholars of Islam, they claim, they have the opinion, that there were female prophets. Like Maryam, like Asiya, like Sarah, like the mother of Musa. They believe, some of the ulama. We're talking about real scholars like Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, rahimahullah, like Imam al-Qurtubi, like Ibn Hazm, rahimahumullah. They believe that those women were prophets. But the overwhelming majority of the ulama, they say no. Because a prophet has to come from a rujula There are reasons. Because of the heaviness, the burden of the message, the risala. So there's a proof in this that women were not given the strength to carry the burdens of this message. The women were given the strength to have babies, but they were not given the strength to carry the message. The message is only for the men to carry. Therefore, the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala required that He send messengers from the male gender and not from the female gender and also that the that the major leadership position be for a man and not for a woman that's why we have this woman down in virginia who i call amina the dude her name is amina wadud but she's amina the dude doing a khutbah leading men in salah what kind of what kind of rijal would allow that woman to stand in front of them and lead them in salah when the fuqaha of Islam for 15 centuries say that if a woman is in the house with her son and he is 5 years old 5 years old Four years old, she can't lead him in salah. You hear it all the time when they ask the ulama, I, you know, I want to teach my son salah, can I lead my... No. Because he's a rajul. He hasn't reached puberty yet, but he falls under rujula, manliness. And the male has superiority over the female, not just because he spins on her and because he has more strength, but simply like Ibn Kathir the Imam, Abu Fida, rahimahullah said, simply because Allah has honored the male above the female. وَالرِّجَالُ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةً And the men have a degree above the women. Even in the Arabic language, brothers, if this whole room right now was filled up with women, and there was a little baby in here, two months old, and it's a boy. I can't come into the room and say, Assalamu alaykunna, which is in the feminine form. Peace be upon you women. I can't do that because that one little baby boy, two months old, has priority over everybody in the room. I have to say, Assalamu alaykum, and put it in the masculine. Two months old baby, according to the language 
itself to show you the excellence of Ar-Rajul, the men, Ar-Rijal, Ar-Rujula. Allah has praised men because of their being true to their covenants. Those who are true to their covenants are the real men. So they're failing to abide by this covenant. The scholars are in agreement. It negates their manhood. If they fail to abide by the covenant that we made with Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with Islam, and we made that statement, Al-Kalimatu Tayyiba, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when we made that statement, that was an aqd, that was a contract, that was an ahd, that was a covenant between us and Allah. Any man who doesn't fulfill and abide by that covenant, that contract, has negated his manhood. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, من المؤمنين الرجال صدقوا ما عهدوا الله عليه. ما عهدوا الله عليه. Amongst the believers are men who keep true, meaning fulfilled their covenant with Allah. Surah Al-Ahzab, verse 23. وَعَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنِ عَمْرِ بْنِ عَاصِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُمَا قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنَّ الْمُقُصِتِينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَنَابِرٍ مِنْ نُورٍ عَنْ يَمِينُ الرَّحْمَانِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَكِلْتَا يَدَيْهِ يَمِينَ أَلَّذِينَ يَعْدِلُونَ فِي حُكْمِهِمْ وَأَهْلِيهِمْ وَمَا وَلُّوا or وَمَا وُلُّوا أو كما قاله عليه الصلاة والسلام The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's companion Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Amr ibn Al-As رضي الله تعالى عنهما ورضاهما He said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Behold the dispensers of justice will be seated on minbars of light next to Allah on the right side of Ar-Rahman. Either side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the right side, being equally meritorious. Because Allah has two hands, and both of His hands are right. Not like us, we have a right hand and a left hand. Both of Allah's hands are right. So no matter what side we are on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who are muqsitin, those who are dispensers of justice and equity. And remember that the sharia defines what is justice and equity and fairness and defines what is oppression and tyranny and treachery. So those people who are muqsitin from amongst the men and then more specifically the imam who was only going to be a man and then right beneath that imam the administrators of the masjids the administration of the masjids, all going to be men, except in those masjids that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying and testing them when they put a woman on the board. The men, if they are the dispensers of justice, they're going to be on the right side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're going to be seated on the right side of Allah on men bars of light. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, those dispensers of justice are those who do justice in their rulership. The men. In matters relating to their families. And in all that they undertake to do. So if you want to be on the right side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On men bars of light. Subhanallah. Next to Allah. Next to Allah brothers then you have to be a dispenser of justice. This is a sign of you being a true rajul. You'll get that reward from Allah. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he said, إِنَّ النَّاسِ لَمْ يَتَنَازَعُوا فِي أَنَّ عَاقِبَةَ الظُّلْمِ وَخِيمَةَ وَعَاقِبَةَ الْعَدْلِ كَرِيمَةَ 
ولهذا يروى إن الله ينصر الدولة العادلة وإن كانت كافرة ولا ينصر الدولة الظالمة وإن كانت مؤمنة شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى he said that the people meaning the scholars of Islam do not differ with regards to the punishment of injustice that in fact it is disgraceful and despicable and they do not differ amongst themselves on the end or the end result the end result of justice that it is honorable and that's why he said it has been related that indeed this goes to the Muslim men this goes to the imam this goes to the administrations of the masjids indeed Allah will aid and assist a just state a just nation a just government a just administration a just man even if he is a kafir a disbeliever Allah will assist a government meaning of men the men who display and disseminate and and dispense justice to the people who are under them Allah will assist them if they are just even if they're disbelievers Sheikh Islam said wala yansuru dawlata al-zalima and Allah will not assist and will not help an oppressive government even if it's a believing government think about that brothers Allah will give his assistance and aid to a kafir government of men if they're just and he won't give his aid and assistance to a believing government if they are unjust that's the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Sheikh al-Islam he said it has been said the affairs of this world last with justice and kufr but they do not last with oppression and islam the affairs of this world last with justice and kufr but they do not last with oppression and islam therefore the unjust transgressor is overcome in this life even though he may eventually be forgiven in the hereafter this is because sheikh al islam said justice is the system of everything So when the affairs of this world are established with justice they last and are strong even though its author may have no share in the rewards of the hereafter and when they are not established with justice they do not last even though its author or authors may have that faith that iman for which they may be rewarded in the hereafter So what happens when we're unjust to our children What happens when we're unjust to our wives? Even though we believe in Allah in the last day, even though we may have the correct aqidah, aqidah as-salafiyah, Allah will not assist us. He will not help us. Allah praised men by saying that they are the ones who love to purify themselves. Fihi rijalun yuhibbuna an yatatahharu. In it, meaning the masjid, are men who love to clean and purify themselves. This is a sign of being a man. This is a sign of rujula. It just doesn't mean brushing your teeth, brothers, or keeping your fingernails and toenails trimmed, and making sure you wash under your underarms and your private parts, but cleansing yourself of kufr and shirk and bid'ah, of which we, I think, we all try to do. but also cleansing yourself of hatred of muslims and backbiting of muslims and slandering of muslims all of this is filthy because these verses that talk about being purified have two aspects according to the ulama of islam like al hafiz al hakimi in his book ma'arij al qulub ma'arij al qubur qulub and also sheikh muhammad aman al jami rahimahullah 
They say that filth is of two types. The one that is the outward filth that you can see, that you clean with wudu and ghusl or tayammum. And the other is the inner type of filth, which is disbelief and polytheism and hatred and rancor and backbiting and gossip. And the one that's on the inside is worse than the one that's on the outside. So the person who is an oppressor to his wife and an oppressor to his children, and we don't mean slapping them around, but we mean that too. But we mean not giving them what they need. Not giving their wives and the children what they need. And the top on the list is an Islamic education with an Islamic environment. Whoever doesn't do that is oppressing them because he's pushing them farther away from that which they have a right to, pushing them closer to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants them to stay far away from, which is becoming eventually a kafir. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاةِ يَخَافُونَ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُوا فِيهِ الْقُلُوبِ وَالْأَبْصَارِ In this ayah, brothers, Allah has praised the men by mentioning that they busy themselves with worshiping Allah and obeying Allah and that they do not busy themselves with worldly affairs above worshiping Him, obeying Him, and remembering Him. The interpretation of the meaning of that ayah found in Surah and nur verse number 37, men who neither trade nor sell, diverse them from the remembrance of Allah. The brothers who are merchants, or the brothers who work for a Muslim, or the brothers who work for the non-Muslims. Men. Who are the men? What's the sign of a rujula? Neither trade nor sell, diverse them from the remembrance of Allah, nor from performing the salah, nor from giving the zakah, and they fear a day when hearts and eyes will be overturned. That's a true rajul. He fears the day when hearts and eyes will be overturned. So when that good looking girl in Kinko's, when you go to eat that fax, when she walks up to you and she invites you to do the haram, you don't say to her, yeah, you look good, baby, but you know, I'm married. I'm, you know, I'm married. That's not what the Prophet told you to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because that suggests something else. You see? That suggests something else. The Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told you to say, I fear Allah. That's what he told you to say. Don't say to her, if it was a different situation, you know, we can, I can get with you. No, he told you to say, I fear Allah. Because these are the men whom Allah is praising in the Quran. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's given superiority to the male gender over the female gender. As we mentioned, وَالرِّجَالُ عَلَيْهِنَّ دَرَجَةً وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حكيم. And men have a degree over them, meaning the women. Manhood, the ulama, they say, is an attribute of the prophets. And manhood is the most exalted of male attributes. As for the authentic hadith from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam described to us what is manhood and who are the men. And Abi Musa radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, qal Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, كمل من الرجال كثير ولم يكمل من النساء إلا آسية مرة فرعون إلا آسية مرة فرعون ومريم بنت عمران وإن فض عائشة على النساء كفض الثريد على السائر الطعام على السائر الطعام from among men many men have reached the level of perfection the Prophet ﷺ said, Many men have reached the level of perfection, but no woman has reached this level, except Maryam, 
the daughter of Imran, meaning the mother of Jesus, alayhi salatu salam, and Asiya, the wife of Fir'aun, and verily the superiority of Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, over the rest of the women, is like the superiority of Thirid, that bread and meat dish, over all of the foods. This hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim. The men are those species out of the two that have reached perfection. But there are some women who have also reached the state of perfection. And the Prophet named three of them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why did they reach the, the state of perfection? Is there any brother here opening the door and then closing it quickly, inshallah? Open the door to questions. Who can answer why those three women were singled out? What is it that made them reach the state of perfection? Anybody? No. Obedience to Allah. Iman and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody else? Patience. They received wahi, did they? They received something that is similar to wahi. They received what is called ilham. Ilham. Wahi is for the prophets of Allah who are only rijal. Ilham, all of us get that. They call it inspiration. You inspired. The Christians take it to another level. They say, the Lord spoke to me today. The Lord said to me last night. No, that's not the one we're talking about. We're talking about Ilham. These women received Ilham. So whatever attribute, virtuous characteristic that you brothers bring right now with regards to these women, the men are supposed to already have it. That's why he said many men reach perfection. Like Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and others. Like Al-Hassan al-Basri, like Fudayl ibn Iyad, like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. These men, inshallah, reach perfection. Because that's something that's natural for a man. As for the women, they have postnatal bleeding. They have menses. They have all of these things that prevents them from reaching it. But these women had menses. And they reach perfection. And we don't have menses. And we have gone to what Allah says in His book, or what some of the ulama have a difference of opinion on what the meaning is. ثُمَّ رَدَدَنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ السَّافِلِينَ Then we return him to the lowest of the low. We, be go, we become lower than women. We become lower than children by not taking the responsibilities, putting it on our shoulders and carrying them out. Abu Huraira, رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that Sa'ad ibn Ubadah al-Ansari said, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what should be done if a man finds another man with his wife? Should he kill him? He said, no. So Sa'ad said, rather yes, by the one who honored you with the truth. So Allah's Messenger said, hear what your master says. Hear what your master says. Meaning, that a man should have ghayra for his women. He should have jealousy. He shouldn't be allowing his wife to go out lewd, licentious, getting in men's faces. What kind of man would allow his woman's voice to be on the answering machine? Assalamu alaikum. You reached the such and such residence. <laughs> We're not available right now. But if you leave a descriptive message, your name and your number, we'll get right back to you. How you consider yourself a rajul, man? You got your girl's voice on the, on the machine. How? You call that rujula? You would like the men to hear your wife's voice like that? The ulama of Islam... They say, so that this person who agrees with that type of immorality, that he will allow it to occur amongst the women of his household, is he a rajul? And is that person who allows his wife to go out displaying her adornment, is he a rajul? And are those people, men, who allow their daughters to intermingle and socialize with males 
in the work areas and who allow them to be alone with men in their offices, are they considered rijal? And I add to this, those men who allow their daughters and their wives to go on what I call the tribe of Myspaceium, the Myspace tribe, the Facebook tribe. I know a brother right now who's respected by all the brothers, all the brothers. His wife is on Facebook, naked. The Portuguese princess is her, is her username. Naked. Naked, brothers. And if you tell him, and Allah knows best, he'll keep her. I guarantee you he'll keep her. I guarantee you. And Allah SWT knows best. The person who allows this, he's not a rajul. He's a dhakar. He's a male. He's a male. Because manhood is in one valley and everybody else is in another valley altogether. In conclusion, brothers, inshallah, we have the hadith collected by Imam Muslim on Abi Sa'id al-Khudri. رضي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رأى في أصحابه تأخرا that the messenger of Allah's companion Abu Sa'id al-Khudri رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saw a tendency amongst his companions to go to the back meaning in the masjid so the messenger of Allah listen to the words brothers the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to say to them, تَقَدَّمُوا تَقَدَّمُوا فَتَمُّوا بِيَا وَلْيَتَّمَّ بِكُمْ مَنْ بَعْدَكُمْ He said, go to the forefront. Go to the front. Come forward and follow my lead. Let those who come after you follow your lead. لا يزال قوم يتأخرون حتى يؤخرهم الله because a people will continue to put themselves in the back and prefer to be in the back until Allah will make them always be in the back brothers do you, do you understand what's being said see if you look at this hadith in a restricted manner you won't get the meaning this hadith is talking about lining up for the rules. You can find this in Sahih Muslim, Kitab al-Salah, the book of prayer, under the section of lining and straightening up the rules, and that the first row is the best row. But if you look at it just with that, you'll miss the point. You'll miss the theme of this particular talk in this blessed masjid, Masjid al-Fajr. The hadith specifically is talking about not staying in the back of the masjid, of which Shaykh al and Shaykh Salah al more specifically, he said, it's amazing. We're talking about the men now. It's amazing, Sheikh Salah Fawzan says. It's utterly amazing. I'm amazed how the Talabatul Ilm, the students of knowledge, the Du'at, will be talking and discussing and staying in the back when the Iqam is called, staying in the back of the masjid and not lining up in the first row. He said, because they are the ones who have more right to be in the first row. If the man makes a mistake, who's more suited to correct the imam than the person who has the ilm. He said, I'm amazed that they would stay in the back. So the sahaba used to stay in the back. Who's in the back of the masjid, brothers? Women. The women. The women. So the Prophet Wasallam said, Taqaddamu, go to the front. Fatammu biya, and follow my lead, meaning follow my example. Follow my example in the salah and in everything. وَلْيَتَّمَّ بِكُمْ مَنْ بَعْدَكُمْ And the people who will come after you, the tabi'un, the atba' tabi'een, the fourth generation, the fifth generation, all the way up to now 1430 until Yom Qiyamah, they'll follow your lead. And what? Just the salah? Just line up the rows? No, brothers. Remember the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Jawami al kalam He's the one who speaks small words, but they're comprehensive in meaning. Don't just look at it as the straightening of the rows. Come to the front, men. 
Follow my lead, men in everything. Your economic affairs, your political affairs, your social affairs. In everything. In educating your wives and your children. In businesses. In everything. Taqaddamu. Go to the front. Well, you tell me, and follow my lead. Fatemu bia, well, you tell me, bikum men badakum. And so those who come after you will follow your lead. La yazalu kaumun. A people, meaning men. Here it means men now. Kaum means men. Just like in that ayah in Surah Al Hujurat. Let not a kaum, a people, deride. And abuse with their tongues other people. The word kaum there doesn't mean men and just people in general. It means men. Because the ayah right after that says women. So a people, he said, la yazalu kaumun. Yata'akharun. Men will continue to be in the back, not taking their rightful place as men. Hatta you akhiruhum Allah. Until Allah will make them be to the back. So look at us. Look at the Muslims around the world right now. And look at our situation in America. All of the people of deviance have institutes. The Habashis, whose headquarters is right there in Philadelphia. They have a school for their kids. Hamza Yusuf, Zay Shaka, the Sufis, who are a Muslim, goes to their masjid every week and he's probably there right now teaching a fit class in Connecticut. At Zayn Shack of the Sufis, Masjid. They, look at that school in East Orange. We can talk about it failing from the dua of Sheikh Rabia, but he got one. We ain't even got one. La yazalu qawmun. Muta'akhirun or yata'akharun. The men will continue to keep themselves in the back. Hatta yu'akhirahum Allah. Until Allah, from the sunnah of Allah, because Allah has sunan. Allah has sunnahs, brothers. Allah has sunnahs. He has sunnahs. Because whatever you do is going to be in commensurate with what you catch. So that's, the, that's, that's how it is with Allah. So that you want to keep being in the back where the girls are? Then Allah will make you be in the back. Because you're not taking your rightful place as rijal. And three years after this talk right now from Sheikh Talib, and myself, we won't have a school. Five years from now, we won't have a school. Ten years from now, right here in this area, we won't have a school. When that kafir, kafir, mushrika, the wife of Elijah Muhammad, Clara Muhammad, when the feds came to her house there in Chicago and said, we got, you got to give up those kids. You got, those kids have to go to school. This is in the 30s. What no such thing as homeschooling then? You got to let those kids got to go to public school. I would never, she said, I would never give my babies over to you devils. <laughs> That's what she told those white men. Because, of course, in those days, we believed that the white man was a devil. We were Mushrikun. And she didn't give them up. And right now, all over the United States, we have schools called what, brothers? Yeah, Clara Muhammad School. A person who believed that Allah was born on February 26th in 1877. We laugh, we chuckle. You want me to say it again, brothers? All over the United States, they have schools called what? Sister Clara Muhammad Schools. Not one school for the Salafiyun. Not one. Be rijal, brothers. We have to be rijal. We have to show our rujula. Take care of your women better. Cherish your women. Take care of them. Provide for them. Don't let them have needs. Take care of their needs. Because if you don't, because of their weakness, they may start looking more because they already do and they fear Allah so they turn their heads. They may start looking at some of them Kafir men who look just like us with the beards. He taking care of his wife. and Yeah, look, yeah, he taking care of his wife. Be rejal, brothers. 
Be rizal. Show your rujula. Because when you get the length of your beard, that ain't getting it. Your beard stands up when you stand up. When you sit down, your beard sits down with you. Show your rujula. Take the responsibilities that are due on you that Allah has placed on your bird, on your shoulders. And be true rijal. And lastly, let your women hear these recordings from Sheikh Talib and myself. You want to be a real man? <laughs> let your wife hear it. Don't hide it. Don't keep it from her. What did the brothers talk about? Oh, it was a nice talk, you know. Yeah, let her really hear it. Sit down with her and listen to it. Show your rujula. And then get up and do something. Because even Miriam, a woman, was ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through ilham. Along with dua, get up and shake the, go to the palm tree and shake it. You'll find fresh dates fall upon you. He didn't just tell her to make dua. The woman was pregnant. She was pregnant, brothers. Pregnant with no husband. Allahu Akbar. He told her to get up. Go towards the palm tree and shake it. And fresh dates will fall upon you. We got to get up, brothers. We got to make dua. And we have to get up and shake the palm tree so that those dates will fall upon us. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam. Subhanaka Allah wa hamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.